This video is uh, about how to increase the number of SATA sockets on your, on your old PC power supplies. I've been playing with personal computers for quite a few years and as a result I've accumulated a fair number of power supplies in my pile of spare parts. Back when a lot of these power supplies were built, they had these kind of power supply connectors. These are called Molex connectors and these are used in old IDE hard drives and optical drives, but they started going out of fashion about 2005 and they were pretty much completely gone by 2007 and everything had been replaced with SATA and those power connectors are different. So I've got quite a few of these power supplies lying around that have a whole bunch of these uh, old Molex connectors which are pretty much useless these days. They have few or no SATA connectors. This one has one SATA cable with two connectors on it. It would be nice to have more. I've already made a video about transplanting entire SATA cables harvested from failed power supplies and putting them into old but still working power supplies that have no or maybe just one cable. Soldering in an entire cable is quite a bit of work. You have to find a place on the board where you can actually solder them to. It, it's, it, it's fairly involved. There are easier ways to add SATA connectors to old power supplies. You can get these simple adapters like this. So it's a male and female Molex connectors. Snap them together. And now you've got two SATA connectors coming off your old Molex connector. Now the problem with this is twofold. First of all, I find that these connectors often fail right here. I don't know what it is, but they often fail right there and you end up sort of wiggling the cable to get your hard drive or optical drive working again. And the other problem is you only have 5 volts, which is red, and 12 volts, which is yellow. Now, actual Molex cables have three voltages. Red 5 volt, yellow 12 volt, and an orange 3.3 volt. Now you can usually get away with this with only the two voltages because in my experience so far every hard drive or optical drive I've tried has only used those two voltages and didn't require the 3.3. But eventually I'm sure I'll run into something that, that does require it. Now in the case of SATA connectors you can actually increase these with a simple add-on as well. Here I have a two-headed SATA connector. You just pop it in like that, and you've increased your total number of SATA connectors by one. That's another cheap, easy way to increase the number of SATA connectors. Now here's another easy way to increase your number of SATA connectors. You can actually just buy the connector. And I got a whole bag full of them right here. I, I got these from a vendor on AliExpress. They were just, they were like pennies each, you know, very, very cheap. You line up the wires, orange, black, red, black, yellow, and you just push them into these little slots here with they have like little blades that cut through the rubber and then make metal to metal contact. And then that way you can add a connector. I'm going to go ahead and add one here. I have the, I have the colors lined up and make sure the polarity of the connector is also correct. That little that little hook there, that little L shape goes on the orange side. Okay, I'm going to be using a flathead screwdriver to help push that wire into that connector. I'm going to push it down deep because we're going to be putting this cap on top of it. Okay, that's our first wire. Now, to make sure that we have good continuity, we're going to check it with an ohmmeter. Now, on my own meter here, I'm just alligator clip holding a little pin so I can get it inside of this connector. And we'll touch the other side. And yes, we have continuity. Good. We'll just repeat what we did for the other four wires. Okay, it looks like we've got all the wires in there. We'll go ahead and check the continuity. Okay, we have continuity in all five wires. Let me just snap the top on. 
Okay, that's it. So now we have three SATA sockets on this SATA cable. Okay, that's another way to add an SATA socket. Now, what about our old Molex connectors? Can we add SATA connectors here? Well, we can, but in order to do it right, we're also going to have to add a 3.3 volt wire, which means we're going to have to we're going to have to open up the power supply and expose the board and find a place to solder that wire onto. We'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, the first thing is we're just going to have to remove these four screws and remove the top of the power supply. Okay, the top is off. Now we do have a connector here holding this big fan on. We need to get that out of the way. Fortunately, it's socketed so we can just unplug it. Now all of these cables were being held by a tie here. I, I opened up that tie connector so that we could mobilize these cables. Our power supply is held on with four screws. I'll go ahead and remove those screws so that we can mobilize the board. The screws have been removed and this board can now be mobilized. We can get a better look at things. And here, this little pad here, this is 3.3 volts. We have a whole cluster of wires coming in this hole, and we have a single wire coming to this hole. I think I'll try to remove this wire and widen this hole with the drill bit, and then I can put two wires in. Okay, I've gone ahead and I have desoldered that orange wire from that point right there, that little hole. Let's see if I can get these two wires in at the same time and solder them in. Now, ideally, the new wire should be orange as well, but I don't happen to have any orange wire lying around. So I've got some pink wire. That's just going to have to do. I tested this little hole here. It's too small to put the two wires through. So I'm going to take my just a small drill bit there, and I'm just going to drill it a little bit wider to get both of those wires through. Okay, well, I've drilled this hole a little bit bigger. Okay, with a little work, I managed to get both of these wires to go through this one hole right here. And so now we have a separate 3.3 volt line that we can run to our old to our old Molex cable and add some sockets to it. So this is the original 3.3 volt line that goes to the original SATA cable. And this new line is going to provide 3.3 volts to the old Molex cable. Okay, we've put the board back into the power supply. Here is our new line that we added. Again, unfortunately, it's pink rather than orange, but it's going to have to do. We're going to take this old Molex line here, and we're going to add this wire to it. And then we're going to add on a couple of these connectors. We're going to start with the uh, pink, which should be orange, but the pink line here. Push it into the connector. Now for the rest, okay, we've got all five wires in that connector. Okay, we're going to check that connector with an ohmmeter. Okay, it all checks good. We've got good continuity in all the lines. I'm going to add a second connector here. So we'll have two SATA connectors on this line. We'll go ahead and check the continuity. Now we can snip off the remaining wire here. Okay, we've snipped off that extra wire. We can put our little caps on here. Okay, we've got the caps on both. Okay, we have added two SATA connectors to an old obsolete Molex line. We had to add a 3.3 volt line in order to do that. We'll now put our power supply back together again and test everything. Okay, we've got our power supply all put back together again. And here is our first cable that we modified, a regular SATA cable in which we added another SATA connector. And here's the other cable, our old Molex type cable, in which we added two SATA connectors plus a 3.3 uh, volt line. So we went from having two SATA connectors to now having five. So that should be plenty for most modern computers.
Okay, we put the power supply back together again and we put it into our test computer. And we're running the optical drive off of one of the add-on connectors. We're running the hard drive off of another one of the add-on connectors. And everything's running perfectly. And here's our computer running Windows 10. So we have successfully updated an old power supply from the mid-2000s. It had a whole bunch of Molex connectors on it. We have added two SATA connectors to one of the Molex lines and added one SATA connector to an SATA line to give it three on one line. So we went from having only two SAT lines on one cable to having five SATA lines on two cables. So that should make this power supply more useful for the year 2020 and beyond. And you can see that just adding connectors to existing cables is a lot easier than grafting on entirely new cables. And that's it.